Greetings. Welcome to the lab for video 114, lecture 114, where we're going to build a bandpass filter. Now the title said low pass RC filter, but we're just going to go ahead and build the bandpass filter and look at each section. Now I had to change the input impedance on the circuit, which was called a, a device under test, DUT because the output impedance of the generator is 50 ohms and the input impedance of the scope is 50 ohms. So I changed our calculations from 100 ohms R1, R2 to 50 ohms R1, R2. Well, that changes your capacitance. So let's calculate what our new capacitance is. So we go over and open up our PTC MathCAD We'll open right here now. I have already done this. I'm going to open my calculations. And here you can see I have R1 equals 50 ohms and R2 equals 50 ohms. Again, the low pass filter frequency cutoff is 20 K Hertz. That's 20 to zero. High pass frequency cutoff is 20 hertz. That's 20 to infinity. Now our C1 capacitor is, bring this over uh, one, that's 50, uh, let's see, now bring this over to the left one, making this a microfarad. Instead of to the negative seven, we move it to the negative six, makes this 0 0.16, rounding up microfarad. The same with C2. C2 is to the negative fourth. So we uh, that would be four places this way. Let's make it to the negative six, make it a microfarad as well. So we bring this decimal point to this way. That'd be negative five. One more. Wouldn't we make it negative six? And that would be 159.2 microfarads. We're just going to make it 160 microfarads. And there you go. So, and our calculations is these right here. C1 equals uh, 0 0.16 microfarads, and C2 equals 160 microfarads. So let's put this in QCS and see how well it works. So we're going to bring that down, open QCS, do a simulation. Okay, opening up our QCS, we'll begin this section of the lab. I'm going to open up our the old, recently open bandpass circuit equations. Now here, I've already changed everything, but we'll go through this and change it again. So this was 100 ohms, and it was called R2. We're going to name it the correct uh, name and give it 50 ohms value. So left-click on the component, right-click, Edit Properties. We're going to name it R1. Since we have two R1s, we're going to name this R1 underscore and come back and change that. 50 ohms, click in here, change it from 100 ohms to 50 ohms, hit apply. Okay, and that gives us this right here. Come over to R2, left click on the component, right click to edit properties, rename it from R1 to R2, change this from 100 ohms to 50 ohms, hit apply, say OK. Come back to this one, left click, right click, edit properties, get rid of the underscore. Now hit apply, OK. Now our resistors equal our diagram on video lecture 114. Now we have to change our capacitance. C1, this is actually called C2 in the last uh, QCS. And so we're going to change this to C1. This needs to be C1. Again, left click, right click. Left click, right click, edit properties, C1, and it's 0 0.16 microfarads. All right, we set that there. Then we'll go to C2. 
left click, right click, edit properties, name it C2, and this is 160 microfarads. Apply, say OK, hit OK. Come up to the gear, no errors. Come back to the equation, and there's our equation. We have a 6 dB drop because our have a maximum power transfer, which is 6 that causes the pole and voltage to be 6 dBs. Our FC is at 3 dBs, and so that should be around 9. So this is uh, let's see, 10, 20, but we have that at 7. So there's a little discrepancy there, but you can see our bandpass filter. And here's the 20k hertz. So uh, uh, anyway, there you have it. We have our bandpass filter. We have our phase, V out phase with relationship to the input. Now let's go to the lab. Here's a test bench that we'll be using test our device. This is the layout that we'll be using as device under test. We'll have the function generator and uh, channel one and channel two feeding into channel one and channel two of the oscilloscope. Channel two will go to the device under test which is our low pass filter and out of that we'll compare and do our body part with our oscilloscope here which is a Siglent SDS1204X E. You gotta make sure it's a dash E if you get this. This is a little bit under $800. And it will do Bodhi plots. One of the only oscilloscopes I've ever found that will do Bodhi plots. And we'll be using this Siglent SDG830 function generator. This is not that expensive. I think this is like $200. And it'll do sweeps, AM, FM, pulse modulation, a, a ton of stuff. So this is going to be uh, highly used in all our experiments. Here is our device under test. As you can see, this is C1, R1, uh, C2, R2. And we'll come into here off this channel 1. Come out of here, go into channel 2, as is in our device under test dive log diagram and this will uh well not over to here but over to here this also communicates through this through a a usb cable that's in the back so this will set this here will set this up and uh will automatically do the body plot so let's put it all together hook it up and go from here and see what happens Well, here's our breadboard. We'll begin. By showing you what the components are, we needed a 0 0.16 microfarad capacitor. That was easy, it actually had that. But then the 160 microfarad capacitor, I didn't have, I had to, to create it. And I did it by putting capacitors in parallel. When you put capacitors in parallel, it's like adding them together. So this is 160 microfarads. This is 0 0.16 microfarad. Here is your output load, 50 ohms. Input load, 50 ohms. So now we're going to hook it up and do our experiment. Okay, here is our test bench. We'll be testing our circuit, our uh, low pass, high pass, main pass filter. We'll be doing the low pass portion first with an FC of 20K Hertz. We should get a 3 dB point at that frequency. That is this right here. We're set up just as we have right here in our block diagram, which I hope you can see. We have our sweep generator, which is this right here. It's gonna sweep from 10 Hertz to 30K Hertz. We have our oscilloscope right here which will be drawing our Bode plot. As you can see, we have semi-log graph. That's the great thing about this Siglent oscilloscope, that it has the ability to do Bode plots.
It also does mass of a different communication, serial communications. So we uh, we have channel one right here going into the channel one of the scope. Channel two going into feeding the uh, device under test, which is our uh, filter, bandpass filter, and the output of the bandpass filter feeding into channel two. Now on the diagram right here, we have channel one and channel two of the generator, but since they're in phase, I'm just gonna use a B and C T connector and feed that into our testing unit. We have two feed through 50 ohm loads. We have changed, remember we changed this from 100 ohms to 50 ohms so that we can impedance match the function generator, which its output impedance is 50 ohms. Then the input impedance of the oscilloscope is 50 ohms, because I've set it that way. And uh, we'll begin from here. The first thing we're going to do is the low pass filter. You can't see the filter where I'm coming off of, because I want you to see the, be able to see the scope. But again, here's our block diagram. You can see that much better now. And so I've set this up to do Bode plots. And uh, if you want to know how to do that, just ask me in the comment section and I will send you the instructions on how to do that. But just hit run and see what happens. It's a little time consuming, but it, it's not that uh, bad. So our plot is complete. And as you can see, the Bode plot is really good. So that's approximately uh, at 20 kHz right here. That's 5.65. This is uh, 3 right here. So it's almost 3 dB. So we're getting a nice sharp turn, a nice sharp pole there to reduce the output. And that's exactly what we want. So now let's just do the uh, high pass filter that where the FC is at 20 Hertz and passes everything from 20 Hertz up to 20 K Hertz. Got the circuit hooked up just to do the high pass portion of the circuit. We'll hit the run. Sweet. This one we should be able to see very fairly quickly. Going into 30 hertz now. You can see the 20 hertz is our big drop. That's our first pole. Okay, the body pot's completed, and we're doing the high pass, where the FC is 20 hertz and above. So as you can see, 20 hertz is this line right here. This is 10, 20, it's a uh, little over eight, probably about nine. We're at six, six plus three is nine. That's exactly where we want to be. So that, that's exactly what we thought. We got our phase shift because it's the ice, Iceman, Eli Iceman, voltage leads in uh, inductor, that leads current, and in ice is current leads voltage in a capacitor. That's exactly what we wanted. So let's combine the two now and make our band pass filter. We're currently going to do the band pass filter. We have the output of the low pass filter 
which is a FC of 20 kHz. So it goes everything from zero hertz to 20 kHz. And that's our 3 dB uh, point um, hole. It feeding into the high pass filter, which has an FC or 3 dB point uh, pole at, at 10 hertz, 20 hertz. And it goes from 20 hertz to infinity. So that's feeding into that. So let's plot, let's plot the pole. I will start it up. So this, this right here is the phase. Here's the voltage out, that's your dB. Which I believe the equation is 20 times the log of V out over Vn. So you can see your, your uh, this right here, that line right there on the log, semi-log graph, that's 20 hertz. And it flattens out at 9.3 dB, and at 12, it's a little above 12 dB, which is a 3 dB drop, is your 20 hertz, your FC for the 20. So that's working out perfectly. So the, the sweep is just about through. Now uh, this right here. We're not, we didn't get exactly what we wanted to see. Now the uh, low pass filter worked perfectly. It had the three dB point at 20 kHz, exactly where we thought it should be. But when we add the two circuits together, they affect each other and it's causing a, a, a drop on the higher frequencies, a little bit higher, like 30 or 35 kilohertz. So that's why you would use a second order filter or a third order filter to, to bring that down. And so this is just a first order filter. It has a low Q. The Q is the quality of how well the filter works. But that, there you have it. And they, what, what affects it is the intrins, intrinsic properties of the capacitors and the resistors and the wires hooking up. They, are, they can all be represented by uh, lump components, a resistor, capacitor, and inductor. So that would be something you would go into when you're doing Smith charts. So I hope you enjoyed it. That's the, that'll be it for this lab. Uh, if you want instructions on how to set this up, exactly how to set it up, uh, text me or comment and I will take, give me your email and I will text you the instructions. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. Bye. Don't forget to select subscribe and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video.